give thanks. In the bad, give thanks. When you're not sure, give thanks. Through frustration, give thanks. Hallelujah. Get out of yourself. Get out of yourself. Come on, lift your hands. He reigns forever. There's none like him. Hallelujah. How many know there's none like our God? How many know there's none like our God? He's faithful. He's wonderful. Hallelujah. He's just perfect in all of his ways. There's none like him. Come on, Rose, start this off. God, you reign forever. You reign forever. And I worship you. I worship you. unto the Lord and say
unto the Lord and say, if you believe it and you know it's true, and no matter what, he reigns. Just lift your voice right here and just bless the Lord right here. Come on. Unto the Lord. Come on. Give God some worship. Give God worship with the fruit of your lips. Give God worship by lifting your hands. Give God worship by giving him your mind right now. Give God worship by allowing your heart to bless him. By allowing your heart to be receptive to his word. By allowing your heart, hallelujah, to glorify him. Come on right here. Right here. Come on right here. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what last week looked like. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what this week looks like. Tomorrow's not promised. So let's bless him now. Let's bless him today. Let's bless him right here. Come on, glorify the Lord. Come on, worship the Lord. There's too many of us in here where we can't give thanks to the Lord. Come on. We can't bless him. Come on, bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, you're worthy. Yes, Lord, we glorify you. Yes, Lord, we honor you. Yes, Lord, as David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord our God. He is King and Lord God of hosts. He's the Lord our God who saved us, who gave his life for us. Our God sent his son, Jesus Christ, for us. Oh, you want to bless him. I don't know what he's done for you. I don't know what he's doing for you. I don't know what doors he's opening for you. I don't know what doors he's closing for you. <laughs> but how many know it's our God who make all the crooked paths straight? That's what he can do. Hallelujah. If your path is crooked, our God is all powerful, almighty. He's sovereign. He's king of kings, lord of lords. He'll make the crooked path straight. Oh, hallelujah. That's who he is. A path straightener that's who he is they said his, his word says his word is a lamp unto our feet a light unto our path if you can't praise him for anything else praise him for his word because his word is true his word is quick is powerful is sharper than any two-edged sword quick his word is alive uh, how many know that it's his word that became flesh 
we call his word Jesus. I will bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. I will bless you. 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 Oh, I will bless you. 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 Oh, I will bless you. Woo! I will bless you. 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 Hey, oh, oh. I will worship. I will worship. Yes, Lord. I will worship. I will worship. On my knees. I will worship. I lift my hands to you. I will worship. I will worship. Hallelujah. He's a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. There's none like him. Hallelujah. Come on, just open your mouth. Come on, just take 60 seconds. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Open your mouth unto the Lord. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. Come on. 60 seconds. Come on. The Lord is waiting. The presence of the Lord is here. So you might as well get in the way. He's right here. You might as well get in the way in the flow of his spirit come on yeah 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 he's worthy the Lord. Come on, give him a hand praise. Come on, give God some glory. Come on, give him some honor. Give him some praise. He's worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We are now going to turn the service over to receive our tithes and our offering. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, we got the ushers on the side. Raise your hand and can service you. The envelope. Hallelujah.
we'll give everybody a, another minute. If you're ready, go ahead and stand. God bless. I'll come around and collect. everyone to bow your head respectfully unto the Lord as we pray over this offering. Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Lord, we thank you for this offering today. We thank you for this day, for the mercies that were waiting on us at our bedside this morning, Lord. We pray that you anoint this offering, Lord, and multiply it times a hundredfold, Lord, so that we can continue to build the upstairs of this temple, Lord, to build the ministries, and to serve your people in this community. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. We're now going to turn the service over to our sister Tiana for the church announcements. Um First announcement is Monday, July 6th, will be our next minister's class, which will start at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Amen. Uh, Tuesday, July 27th, will be the quarterly fast that begins at 6 p.m. and will end July 30th at 6 p.m. Amen. Bible study will continue to be held virtually via Zoom on Thursdays at 7.45 p.m. for Mount Olive and T.O.P. until further notice. So please continue to invite your friends and family to our in-person Sunday services at church and our virtual Bible study on Zoom on Thursdays at 7.45. All church members, please check your emails for updates and con anything concerning our services for the church. Please remember to evacuate the church directly after service so that the cleanup crew can clean and disinfect the church immediately after service. Amen. Just, I'm going to just do one save the date for August kind of early, but August the 28th will be the next mega gathering, uh, 10 a.m. via Zoom. Amen. Amen. Uh, no birthday announcements just yet. Amen. Um, Please remember our prayer box, which is available for anyone who would like to make a prayer request on behalf of themselves or someone else, and it will be given to an anonymous, um, it will remain, excuse me, anonymous, and be given to our prayer group. Counseling or studying of the Bible with bishop and pastor is available by appointment, phone, or email. If you would like to make a special prayer request, please see Sister Liza, and it will be given to bishop and pastor. Any other announcements or events you would like to place on the calendar, please see Sister Liza or Sister Latoya. Please keep our bishop, uh, our pastor, their family, and church family in prayer before God. Let us always remember the sick, the shut-in, and bereaved families everywhere. Amen. Philippians 2 and 2, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, and being of one accord. And at this time, please let us stand and receive our assistant pastor, Robert Lee Lewis. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for communion, amen. Thank God for his son, Jesus Christ, for sending his son, his only begotten son, to be the, the sacrificial lamb for us, the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice for us. We know we could not have done it ourselves, so he sent Jesus Amen. As a sacrifice for us so that our sins would be washed away. You ought to give God some praise for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. We bless God. We don't have to kill any lambs. They don't have to kill any bulls. Jesus Christ did it all. 1 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 23, reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup Cup, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body for this cause. Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Thank God for his word. pray over the cracker that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. our deacon Nico to pray over the juice that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. by the ushers to come up amen, and, and remember we do this in remembrance of what Jesus Christ did for us at Calvary and on the top where the cracker is there's plastic on top where we open and then the, alum the, the aluminum uh, foil that's on top we open that for the juice I'm going to ask that you come up grab your communion go back to your seats and we will all take communion together amen, amen. be led by the ushers
as white as snow. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift this. Father, we believe you and remember what you did for us at Calvary. Let's open the plastic for the cracker. Father, your body that was broken for us. Let us eat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, this juice that represents your blood that was shed for us. Let's open it. Let us drink. Hallelujah. Come on, just take a moment and remember what Jesus did for us. Give him the glory. Come on, somebody just open your mouth unto the Lord and give him as an act of worship with the fruit of your lips. Bless the Lord right here. Honor him. Honor him. Come on, lift a shout unto the Lord and give him some praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's give, let's give our God some praise in this house for the angel of this house. Come on, our Bishop Troy V. Ingram Sr. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, give God another hand, praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Bless the Lord, all ye people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, all ye people. Praise him, all ye heavenly hosts. Give God glory. Give God glory. Give God glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Give him praise, give him praise. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Glory be to God. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We bless God today. Amen. Giving God glory and honor. Amen. It is good for us to be here. God is good and all the time. Amen. We are so happy to be in your presence today. Thank God for his grace and his mercy that has brought us through. We thank God for seeing my daughter Latoya here today. Amen. It's good to see her. And my grandson Jaden keeping that noise up back there. It's good to see them in the church in the house of the Lord. Good to see Sister Rosalind and my brother Nick. It's good to see them here today. Missing a few for vacation. It's the month of July. We know how that goes. Vacation time, summertime, people taking vacation. But we're here Amen. in the name of Jesus to give God praise, glory, and honor. Thanking him for all that he's done. For we know that without him, we would not be here. It's been a blessed week. If you've been blessed through this week, come on and give God a hand praise. <laughs> Amen. Come on and say it loud. I'm blessed. blessed. Amen. Blessed. Blessed to be alive. Blessed to be in the land of the living. Blessed to have all of our senses. Blessed to have all that God has blessed us with. We are truly blessed in the Lord. Thanking God for all things. Saints, open up your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 37. Thank God for the word. Amen. Genesis 37. There is a word from the Lord. I believe that. There is a word from the Lord. Genesis 37. We will also be touching on Romans 12. And we have a verse in Psalms 19. 119, excuse me, and 9. God bless you, each and every one in our Facebook audience. It's good to have you, good to share 
our service with you. Those of you watching us on YouTube, after the fact, God bless you also. We're blessed to be here, to be at your service, for there is a word from the Lord. We thank God for Assistant Pastor sent me a powerful message yesterday from my brother, Tony Evans. What a word from the Lord he gave. Consistent brother, truly loves the Lord, and he doesn't back down. I like that. He doesn't back down. He tells the truth, and he tells it like it is. He doesn't offend, although some may get offended. That's not his way, but he does tell the truth, and he wants men to know what thus says the Lord. How many know that there are some of us that's not going to take down, but we're going to stand for the truth. We're going to stand for what God says and for what God wants from his people. Our title is still Spiritual Warfare. Spiritual Warfare. Talking about that warfare where we are battling spiritual forces, demons that we cannot see people of the spirit world that do not fight fair, who have somewhat of an advantage because they can see what we can't, who will try everything within their power to get us to do things against God's word, will, and way. But how many know we have authority over demonic spirits? We have authority over the people of darkness, for God has given us the power Which is why Isaiah told us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Which is why Peter told us that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. This is why we always win in spiritual warfare. Even when it looks like we're losing, we're still winning. I say it again. Even when it looks like we're losing, we're still winning. We're winners because Christ intended for us to be. He died so that we can be winners. And we are just what he says we are. I am what Jesus says I am in this spiritual warfare. I am more than a conqueror. I have already won. That's why John said, now, beloved, we are the sons of God. You know, the sons have power from the king. The sons have authority from the king. His en- the enemies of the king can't defeat us because the king has given us power and authority in his name. Amen. Amen. And just for believing on the name of Jesus, we have been saved. For trusting on what Jesus did at Calvary through his blood, we have been delivered from the power of of sin. As John said, but as many as received him, gave he them power to become what? The sons of God. Even to them that did believe on his name. Our focus for this week, my change is here. Again, my change is here. Most of us talk about change, but I really want to ask the question, do we believe that our change is here? I want to change that from our change is coming. Our change is here. You can always change. You and I can always change. You can change. Don't let no one tell you that you can't because you can. Doesn't matter if you're 60, 70, 80, you can change. Everyone can change. Through Jesus, who's given them the authority to make change, which is why God has told us repent. Repent doesn't mean ask for forgiveness. Repent means change. It means go a different direction from the direction we were going to change our projection, to change our direction, to change the trajectory, to go a different way. My change is here. The target for this week To have the mind of Christ. Again, to have the mind of Christ. 
Because when we have the mind of Christ, we have the mind of a champion. A champion who championed over death, hell, and the grave. Defeated Satan and all the dark forces as he walked earth. Because he had the mind that God wanted him to have in the spirit. As saints, I want to tell you something. As long as we walk in the spirit, God's going to keep us. Amen. Hey, man, I, I, need, I need somebody to act like you believe that. As long as we walk in the spirit, God is going to keep us. Amen. You need to know that. We got to walk in the spirit. And as we walk in the spirit, God is going to protect us. He's going to deliver us and help us in all that we do. But we must walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Then we'll have the mind of Christ. Quick overview of our title, Spiritual Warfare. I focus my changes here. Our target to have the mind of Christ. Finally, our topic. Change your perception. Change your life. Again, change your perception. Change your life. God has given us power and authority over everything within our lives, within our thinking, within the way we talk, within the way we look at things and view things. We all have the power of change. God saved us not to leave us the way we are, but so that we can change, that we can be better in him, that we don't have to be who we were because now we are the sons of God. And because we are the sons of God now, we have the power through Jesus Christ to make change possible. We can change. We don't have to be the same anymore. We don't have to talk the same, think the same, look the same, hear the same thing. How many know that when you hear something long enough, you'll begin to believe it? Somebody tell you something long enough, you begin to take it in about yourself and begin to say, well, that's who I am. Because it will affect us spiritually because it messes with our perception. Never really understood how deep this word really is because, you know, how you use certain words and you, you don't really just think about them because you think you know what it really means. But perception speaks of our awareness and our understanding. And this is what the internet said about perception. It said perception is the organization, identification, and interpretation. Now, that, 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 I don't know about you right there. That sounds kind of deep to me. Those words are deep. Again, perception is the organization, identification, and interpretation of, listen, sensory information in order to represent and understand the presented information. In other words, our perception goes by what we see, what we feel, what we hear. It goes by our five senses. So that's our perception. That's a limited perception. Because our perception gets what it has from our senses. For instance, some of you today came in here with situations that don't look good. And if you continue to look at your situation, your situation is going to give you a perception of what is going to happen, and now that becomes reality. That becomes your life. That is your baby, because your perception is what you conceive. Your perception can be what you believe. Because if you're looking at it in a certain way, then that's the way it is. Remember, we walk by faith, not by sight. God doesn't want us walking in our five senses. So I never 
never thought about it this way, but I want to present to you that walking in our perception is dangerous. Walking in our perception is critical and could bring us to places we don't need to be because we're trying to perceive something in our senses that we need to be seeking God about. Because our senses will begin to tell us what we're looking at. It will begin to tell us how we're feeling. But if our senses is speaking to us, then where's their time for God to talk to us? Because if we're already perceiving one way, how will we ever see it God's way? Because it's not what it looks like if we see it God's way. And that's why the story of Joseph gets to me so much. Because when I read the story of Joseph, Joseph's story lets me know that even though people have perceived him in a certain way, it was not God's plan for his life to remain in a pit. It was not God's plan for his life to remain a slave. It was not God's plan for Joseph's life to remain in prison. We have to understand those were people's perception of him. His brothers didn't want him to live, but God had a different plan for Joseph. God had a plan for Joseph that his brothers were not able to stop. And little did his brothers know the plan that God had for Joseph would not only save Joseph, but would also save them. This is why we cannot, all, we cannot look at things for what they are, but we have to see things through the eyes of God. Come on and say it with me. I got to see things through the eyes of God. God has created us free will, free will agents. He is not going to direct us on how to see things if we're not seeking him on how to see things. He will allow us to give our interpretation. He will allow us to organize it the way we see it. Because that's how he made us, free will agents. That's exactly how Satan wound up in sin. Because God gave everyone he created the right to serve him and worship him if they wanted to. Just like today, people have the right to come to church and not come to church. People have the right to read the Bible or not read the Bible. You can't make them read God's word. You can't make them come to church. Because if their perception says, I don't believe in God, guess what? To them, God is not real. But I want you to know that Jesus is real to me. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world says. My God is real. And because God is real, that doesn't come to me straight from my perception. That comes to me by faith. Because now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. So what am I presenting to you today? I'm presenting to you today that faith is the perception we have to walk in in order to see what God is doing in our life. Because through faith, you can see. Through faith, you can hear. Through faith, you can feel. But you have to get out of your natural senses and get into your God senses. And you can only get there by faith. And God can cause you to see what can't be seen. And if if you're doubting that, now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence. Evidence means I can feel it. If it's the substance of things hoped for, I can see it. Because it is my spiritual sense. It's the one that keeps me walking in God and makes me to be victorious in Jesus Christ. Because I could not even be in a Christian without faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. You must have faith to please God. Come on and say it with me. I must have faith to please God. God created us free will agents, meaning that we get to choose how we think, how we act, 
for ourselves. We are responsible for what we choose and think. We are responsible. And God holds us, holds us accountable for the things we do. So think about this. If all this time you know you knew or did not know, you are held accountable for everything that you think, choose, and say. What have you been thinking? What have you been saying? What have you been choosing? And then look at your life, and your life will tell you exactly what's going on. Because your perception, how has it been used? Has it been used through faith, or has it been used through what you see? In Romans 12, very interesting scripture, and I know some of y'all can quote it. But God says something here that's very strong and powerful. And the Holy Ghost says to us, listen, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your, listen, reasonable service. Listen to verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed. Meaning that a change has to come. There has to be a renewing of the mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There has to be a renewing of the mind. And the only way the mind can be renewed is through the word of God. So now... What God is telling me is that your perception has to change to what I already know. And what I already know, God says, is in my word. And if you receive my word and my word lives in you, then my word will make you. My word will help you to grow and mature. But you have to receive God's word. And when you receive God's word, it will change you. It will transform you. It will take you from being that uh, 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 um, ugly looking caterpillar to that beautiful butterfly that flies away. For the same word here in the Greek for transform, metamorphosis, is the word that describes what happens from a caterpillar to a butterfly and how a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and later comes out something it never was. I come to let you today, know today that is your day for a change that you've never had. It's your time for a victory that you've never won. It's your time to have what God says you can have and not to sit around and pity yourself because you think it's not going to get better. I come to let you know the devil is a liar. Your mind today needs a change. It needs a cleaning. And the only way to get that cleaning is to hear. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But faith is also this. is getting what God has for me. So then faith cometh by and hearing by, hearing by the word of God. As I begin to hear God's word and I believe what God says, anybody hearing this? Because the word of God fights perception. As he, by hearing the word of God, as I begin to believe what God says, my perception stops. And now I begin to perceive by faith what God says. And then when I perceive by faith what God says, God brings into my life what I'm believing him for. And now what I have perceived through God, I believe. And what I believe, I conceive. And what I conceive, I receive. Because I did not let my perception deceive. Be not conformed to this world. The whole world, as Brother Evans was preaching his message, is deceived. Because everybody is looking for science to fix our problems. People are trusting politics to fix our problems. They're trusting the president to fix our problems. 
They're trusting that the military can fix the country. But I come to present to you today that there's only one way that things can be fixed, and that is through Jesus Christ. And if Jesus is not the way used, then everything remains the same, and everything is going to die without Jesus. Because he is the answer to the world today. And without Jesus, everything is going to fall. The perception was so bad with Joseph's brothers, they saw Joseph as an enemy because of a dream. They didn't see the spiritual message of the dream. They didn't see that God had something greater for Joseph. And what God had for Joseph would eventually help them. The only thing they saw was that this spoiled brat with this special coat from his father just wants to show himself because he has favor over us. And because of his favor, we hate him. I come to let you know the church, because of who you are, you are hated. Because as a Christian, God's favor is upon you. So when you find things happening in your life, when you find yourself in a crisis, it's all because the devil is against you. But I come to let you know that the great one is with you. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't have to worry about the crisis because through the crisis, God is bringing change in my life. That's what God is bringing, because that's what crisis does. Crisis brings change. <clears throat> so what we go through for a moment. The Bible tells us weeping may endure for a night, but what cometh in the morning? Joy. And your morning is whenever you choose your morning to be. God has, God has given you the power to say when morning is. The moment you stop weeping. The moment you stop worrying about what you're going through and start trusting God for your life, for your family, for your food, for your dwelling place. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you not know this is why the enemy doesn't want you to have praying time? This is why the enemy doesn't want you to stay in God's word. This is why the enemy doesn't want you getting close to God because he knows that the longer he keeps you away from what God says, the more he can keep you deceived. And if I'm not looking for what God says, then I'll receive what my perception says. I will perceive what I see, what I hear, what I feel, and then I'll begin, listen, I'll begin to feel what I feel. I'll begin to believe what I see. I'll begin to think what I hear is true because my perception is all messed up because my perception is not hooked up to my faith. In God. And don't get it wrong. You can be a Christian and your perception be way off. Oh, if I, I, I just, I, you know what? If it was, if it was true, some of us would, would get a V8 to get our perception straight. You remember V8 in the commercial? Everybody was walking crooked because they needed a V8 to straighten them up. With a lot of us, we're walking very crooked. Because our perception is way off. And then we wonder why we're staying in situations and circumstances so long. It's because our perception is all wrong. Joseph was wrong in his perception. Joseph, Joseph knew that his brothers were jealous of him. Joseph knew that his brothers envied him. And what would he do rather than show himself somebody with them, he showed himself as somebody above them. Which is why when they looked at Joseph, he just got, just them seeing him made them think about their hatred. <clears throat> any of y'all ever had any siblings like that? Or had any friends like that? They just thought they were so big and they, and they, 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 they were so much 
and that there was nothing you could do that was better than them. It's so sad. Favor. Or, or, or let me tell you something. Let's bring it home. How about at work? Those at work who the boss, you talking to the boss, and the boss are changing his attention to talk to Sarah because he likes Sarah more. And then he come back to you, don't even remember what you said. Because Sarah's there. Be like that guy told that, that man on the commercial when the man called him and told him he wasn't coming in. He said, don't worry about it, Bob is here. He said, oh, I think this cold's slipping off me. I'm coming to work. No, you stay home, you stay home. Bob's got everything. He played with his favor and played with his favor till it made his brothers hate him. Just because his father liked him more or, 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 or showed more love to him because he was a son of his old age. And rather than look at how his brothers felt about it, rather than look at perceiving it from their point of view, he perceived it as, <laughs> this is me. I got the favor. I got daddy and daddy going to listen to me. So he goes, he starts telling on them. He goes and he starts saying evil things about them. Make the father gets on, get on them. And they wind up hating him. Oh, and is it just like God? In the middle of them hating him, God gives him a dream. God knew that Joseph at this time was immature. God knew that Joseph at this time didn't understand what God had for him in his life. But God showed him a dream of a promise he was giving him. In other words, through the dream, God was giving Joseph a word. He was giving Joseph something to look forward to. And as immature as Joseph is, Joseph took that and made the brothers think, I'm going to be over you. You're going to bow to me. <laughs> yes, you will. He flaunted that in their face. Listen, it wasn't for nothing that Joseph's brothers wanted to get rid of him. They just wanted to get rid of his flaunting of his favor in their face. That's what they wanted. But what they didn't know is that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are the called according to his promise. And God was going to use what they would do to Joseph to save the Jewish race so that they would be what they are even right now and going towards the future. It was Joseph's future that would save the family. It was Joseph's calling. It was Joseph's purpose that would bring the family out of slavery or extinction. Joseph didn't understand how deep it was. So let's read this story with Joseph. Genesis chapter 37, beginning at the fifth verse. Let me start at verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. And they could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed the dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf rose above and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brothers said unto him, Thou shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou have dominion over us? And listen, and they hated him yet the more for his dreams, and listen, his words. They hated him not for just his dreams, but for his perception. It's 
Somebody's not getting it yet. They didn't like him because he perceived himself as somebody greater. He wasn't looking at it as someday he would save the nation or that God had a greater plan through this dream. See, some of us, we look at ourselves right now, and you look at yourself where you're at. What do you see? See, because there's what God sees, then there's what we see. What are we seeing? Ask yourself that question right now. What am I seeing? Just ask yourself, what am I seeing? And what you're seeing will tell a lot about you and what you, what you tell about yourself. So then faith cometh by hearing because Joseph, listen, Joseph understood that he had the favor of the father, but he didn't understand what the dream meant. So you know the story of what happened. His brothers got angry with him. His brothers caught him. His brothers threw him in a pit to kill him, to get rid of him. Because listen, their plan was to kill him. Their plan was to murder their own brother. Just to stop him from flaunting his favor. Favor ain't fair. The enemy hates us because of the favor of God upon our lives. This is why some of us are going through more than others. This is why some of us are having a hard time in life. Why? Because the enemy hates our favor. I need you to understand that it was his perception that got him kicked out of heaven. He thought he could be God. He thought he can take the throne of God. He thought he can be over the angels of God. And it wound up getting him kicked out of heaven, wound up getting him caught up in darkness. And now he's separated from God for eternity just for the bad perception he had. And now, because he has spoken to our mother and father, Adam and Eve, he's got us in a place where now we all are born in sin and shaped into iniquity. But now, thank God that he sent Jesus that we can come out of what he planned for us. And I come to let you know that he's defeated when we receive Jesus who has brought us the favor, the grace of God. And because of God's favor, because of God's favor, I can defeat the one who thought, whose perception thought he can take over heaven, who perceived he could defeat God. See, because that's what the unbeliever believes. That's what the atheist believes. That's what they believe out in the world who don't know God. They believe that they can take care of themselves because they perceive that they're the only ones here. Oh, but we serve a mighty God. We serve a great creator. We serve one that has protected us, has protected us from our very beginning. Let me tell you something. There was a plan from you for the mo before you were conceived. There was a plan for you from the moment you got into your mother's womb. God knew your purpose. God already planned out your life. Your steps were already ordered. You will not be defeated. You will not go down. See, this is the way you got to speak to yourself. You got to tell self, wake up. Self, trust thou in the Lord and believe God. And God's going to bring us out. I don't care how great your financial situation is. I don't care how much the less money you have. It doesn't matter if they stole your car or took your house. What matters is that God has you. And he's going to give you what the enemy says you can't have. For I want you to know that they tried to kill Joseph, but it didn't work. He went from the pit to Potiphar, to the prison, to the palace. Why? Because God was with him. And God is with you. And he's going to bring you out. But you got to trust him. You got to know that he's working in your life. You got to see what God sees for you. You have to have faith. For without faith, you cannot see it. You have to see the upstairs done. Before it's done. I don't already picked out the carpet. 
I don't already picked out the chairs. Why? It's already done. In my mind, it's already done. You got to see it before you see it. That's what faith is about. You got to see it before you see it. You got to. Because that's how faith works. It perceives differently. Listen, faith perceives what it cannot see and says it is. Faith hears what the world is not telling them and says, I'm going to hear it. Because you may not have heard you're going to get a raise, but I dare you today to hear it in your ear that you're going to get a raise. Because I don't know about you, but the prices are going up. I went to the gas station, it was $3.15, but I said, Lord, I'm believing you. And I just heard we got a raise on the job. In the midst of an economical situation, we got to raise. Why? Because if God is for us, who? See, you got to know that. You got to walk with that. You have to see that. I'm not worried about anything. Now, don't go tempting God and walking out at night saying, ain't nobody going to bother me. The devil's a liar now. The devil's a liar. But if you just happen to be outside, because you have to be, I, sometimes I got to come home late at night. But you know what? I'm not worried about it because God knows where I'm coming from. I'm not doing it to tempt him. God is with me. I know God is with me. And God's going to protect me. And, and Why? Because I'm walking with him. Because he is my protector. We said it earlier. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Shall abide under what? The shadow. The protection of the Almighty. You are, you know, you, you're protected by the creator of the universe, man and woman. Do you understand what you have? Do you know who you serve? You serve the one that can snatch their breath before they even touch you. You serve the one that can make their hand stop in midair. Oh, it's happening in the word of God. They can come against you and drop dead with a heart attack. You need to be praying for them. Bless your enemies. Because they don't even know who they're coming up against. They don't even understand who you are in Jesus. They don't know what you've been through. And God has brought you here so that you can have a testimony. I've been through that. I got through this. And so will you. Your life is a testimony for somebody else. God is taking you this way so that you'll be able to tell somebody you can make it. God did it for me. God will do it for you. He brought me out. He'll bring you through. But you got to keep walking. You got to keep trusting God. You got to walk in faith and know that God's going to do it. This is what you got. You got to perceive these things. It has to be in you. And then when you start to walk in and say it, people will begin to see it and you'll make change in their life. I'm telling you, a change is, a change is here. We're not walking out of here thinking the same. We're not walking out of here with the same old thoughts. No. We're walking out of here different. Things are going to change, Eric. Things are going to change, Nico. Because I know who my healer is. I know who my deliverer is. I know the one that keeps me. I know the one that ordered the universe. And he lives inside of me. And because of him, I live. In him, I live. I move and I have my being. And because of him, I'm here. They wanted to stuff me out, but I'm here. Demons promised to kill me, but I'm still here. And I survived. And I will survive till God said, come home. Mm. They thought they could kill Joseph. Psalms 119 and 9. It says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? Listen to what it says. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Now I want you to hear 
the interpretation of the Amplified. I found this fitting. I'm going to read it again. Psalms 119 and 9 in the King James. We always read the King James because the, that, I just call that the church Bible. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Listen to what the Amplifier says. The Amplifier says, how can a young man keep his way pure? Listen, by keeping watch, parenthesis, on himself, according to your word. Speaking of God, listen, conforming his life to your precepts. In other words, not forming my life according to my own thoughts and my own thinking, but conforming my life to God's thinking. What does God say about me? What does God see? What do I hear from God? Because a lot of times we spend so much time listening to other folks so we don't got so many things in our head, we don't know what to believe. A lot of us are just walking around a bunch of confused people. Because we don't heard from so many folks, who are we going to listen to? Who is we? Because we don't know who to believe, because we don't heard so many different folks say something. But how do we know who's talking right? Who's ever got the word? How do we know it's saying what's supposed to be said? Who's ever saying what thus says the Lord? How do we know if they're telling us what's right? I come to tell you what Tony Evans says. The only thing that's going to get us right is the word. And if the word can't do it, it just can't be done. But I come to let you know that, my God, there is nothing impossible to him. That all things are possible to them that believe, who know and receive what thus says the Lord. Therefore, I want God's thoughts to be my thoughts. I want to see what God sees. I want to hear what God has to say. Because when I drown y'all out, what I need is a word from the Lord. That's what Jehoshaphat was telling Ahab when he said, is there a word from the Lord? He heard all the false prophets talk. He heard all they said, go up, go up. You shall win. Surely victory is with you. Jehoshaphat said, is there a word from the Lord? In other words, I already sense in my spirit they're lying. I need somebody who's been in contact with the Lord. Because I can already tell they got wrong information. Mmm. Mmm. And from our youth, if we be truthful and we be honest, some of us have just picked up some bad information. And that bad information we picked up has grew up with us and has not helped us change, but helped us get worse. Let's just tell the truth. Can we tell the truth and stay saved? Can we tell the truth and shame the devil? You're, you're in the position or place that you're in Governed by what you've been hearing. For faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. What have you been hearing? What have you been hearing? You know what? A lot of people don't even know it. The Bible said by their fruits, you shall know them. You know what? People don't even realize that from when you open up your mouth, people can tell whether or not. You've been with the Lord. When those people took Peter and John and put Peter and John in prison, just by their conversation with them, the Bible says they took note that they had been with Jesus. They knew that these men, have, we can hear from what they say, they've been with the master. And even though they were against Peter and John, there was no denying that Jesus' word was in them. And they knew it from just 
talking to them. They knew they had been with Jesus. They took note of it. And they knew they couldn't come against them because what Peter and John had did was just cause this man to be healed. Because even they questioned it. He said, what is the people going to say to us that we mad at them? There is a good thing that they did. But they just didn't like who they served. It was nothing personal against Peter and John. It was because Peter and John preached Jesus. That's why the world don't like us, because we stand for Jesus. That's why you've been having trouble, because you stand for Jesus. That's why you're going to have conflict, because you stand for Jesus. Because the enemy sees that there is the potential of you doing something great for God. He's got to stop you. But I come to let you know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and they that stand up against us in judgment, God shall condemn. In the end, we will be victorious. Come on and say it with me. In the end, I will be victorious. Now come on and clap your hands like you believe it. Come on and clap your hands like you perceive it. Clap your hands like you know it. Know that God has a greater plan for you. They tried to murder Joseph. It was God dealing with Joseph and Joseph handling it in a mature, immature way. And it was his brothers being solicited by Satan to stop Joseph from the dream that he told, that Satan heard, that Satan knew there was something special about Joseph. Because, you know, Satan sees in the spiritual what we can't. So whenever you find yourself in a rut that you feel like you can't get out of, Know who's trying to keep you there. Know who's trying to help you stay there. And then realize who you serve. And realize whose you are and who you are. For the most powerful thing any of us can really have is to know whose we are. See, because when you know that you are a child of God, You know that you have authority over all your enemies. And you don't only have authority over your enemies, you have authority over your inner me. They're going to get that later. You have authority over your inner me. So what? I can tell my inner me, trust in the Lord. I can tell my inner me, be happy in the Lord. I can tell my enemy, I will not sit here, but I will dance in the Lord. See, some of us, we don't need nothing more than a joy party right there in our house. What we need to have is a praise break in our bedroom. Because you wait till you get to church to praise, but where is your praise seven days a week? Enemy sees you only can dance when Leon's playing. He knows that you won't dance if Hakeem don't come. But can you dance anyhow? Because hallelujah is hallelujah anyhow. I'm going through hallelujah. I'm having trouble. Hallelujah. I can't pay my mortgage. Hallelujah. The government's after me. Hallelujah. I lost my job. Hallelujah. Why? Because that don't change anything. Praise ye the Lord. It don't change anything. Still, praise the Lord. My marriage is in trouble. Praise the Lord. I'm sick in my body. Praise the Lord. And if you're laying there and can't praise them, wink. Let everything that have breath, 
Ah, you better preach. Joseph believed God, even though they tried to kill him. Joseph believed God, even though they enslaved him. Joseph believed God, even though some floozy tried to make him sin against God and his slave master. He would not do what displeased God. He would not. He refused. He refused to give up his integrity just for a little taste of infidelity. He refused. I want to ask you a question. To get what God has for you, what will you refuse? What will you turn down? What will you say no to to get what God has? Hard times will come, but hard times also go. Trouble comes, trouble go. Ah, we're taught this too shall pass. But do we really see that? Or do we let it affect us so bad that even when it passed, we're still in it? Y'all know what I'm talking about? They even show us that on TV, how people get into car accidents and they dead, but they wake up and they're still in the car and they're just going through, through it over and over. Y'all ever seen that? I don't know what it's called, but it's crazy. Because that's TV. TV just show it like that. But let me tell you something. When God has your life, there's nothing the enemy can do to stop it. See, that's why I see what my boys are going through. Oh, but I thank God that it's not over. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I thank God it's not over. And I come to tell you, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You better know because there's breath in your body is not over. It's never over. I, I, I love it when they tell me it can't be done because then you know what? That gives me more of a press and a push to pray. Because let me tell you something. You can change things in prayer that you'll never change in life by yourself. We have to pray. We have to seek God. And what I believe, I believe through all this that was happening, Joseph built a relationship with God. Through the worst of his days, and listen, in the 13 years away from his family, Joseph still believed God. And God matured him through that process, through the process of the pit, through the process of Potiphar's house, through the process of the prison. God matured him to the point where Joseph showed us even before his own dream come to pass that God had gave him the gift of interpreting dreams. So what I come to tell you, I come to let you know that somewhere while Joseph in the 13 years a slave, 13 years a slave, Joseph found out what his dream really meant. And God gave him the gift to interpret other people's dreams. So God is showing us while Joseph was in trouble, he was with him. Because everywhere Joseph went, Joseph had favor. Favor in Potiphar's house. Favor in the pit because they didn't have to pick him up. But they took him out the pit. And guess who was the cause of him getting out the pit? Judah. Jesus saved them because Mary was yet in Judah. And Judah had them lifted up and told them, let us not kill our brother. And they listened to Judah and they gave God praise. For Judah means he had favor in the pit, favor in Potiphar's house, favor even, listen, that man should have killed Joseph for trying to rape his wife. 
But the favor was with him that Potiphar couldn't touch him. And Potiphar put him in prison. And he went to prison, favor followed him. And I come to let you know, favor follows you. And I know the world doesn't want us to believe it, but favor follows us. Because when it's all said and done, God is taking us out and he's leaving the world behind. And leaving them with all their wrong perceptions and taking us out for perceiving that Jesus is the Son of God. God is going to remove us from this world and save us from his wrath that is surely coming because he's already showing us it's already taking place. This year alone, pandemic. These are biblical time omens. But God is letting us see it to let us know I'm coming. And I got my son who's coming to pick you up. And even in this, these hard times right now, you are blessed. You are blessed. Because you know why? It was from Joseph being saved that he kept the Jewish people alive. That the Jewish people could be a blessing to all of us Gentiles in this church right now. We're here because Joseph believed God. And I come to tell you that yesterday, today, and tomorrow, Jesus Christ, the same. He's going to save you right now. He's going to deliver you right now. He's going to heal you right now. And it doesn't matter what you're going through. doesn't matter what's happening in your life. God is with you. David said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. In the days of people losing their job, I declare to the church today, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, but you shall keep your job. And not only will you keep your job, but you will prosper on it. And not only will you prosper, but your boss will show you favor. And those on your job will show you favor. And people in the world will show you favor. And blessings shall come to you 30, 60, and 100 running over. Running over. Your blessing shall overflow. There's an overflow coming to the church. There's an abundance coming to the church. I declare it and I believe it that my days of abundance are here. My days of overflow are here. Thus says the Lord, I will bless you. Blessed is the man that walketh in the ways of the Lord. Blessed is the man that sitteth not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is that man. Through Jesus, that blessed man is us. Come on and stand with me. Come on and stand with me. Come on and stand with me. You watch the news enough, you'll get discouraged. You'll think, oh my God, what is happening in the world? <clears throat> Look like everybody's got a gun. Like everybody's just shooting people for no reason. Just doing evil to people. And you'll start thinking, oh, I wonder if that's going to happen to me. It won't happen to you. For Jesus is with you. But you can't walk around with the, you can't walk with the perception. It might. Can't do that. Because if you're already feeling and sensing that, so a man thinketh, can't have that. No. We walk by faith. Powerful. We walk by faith. Not by what our senses say. But by faith in God. Pastor and I this week talking about people you know how God put people in your spirit and you just begin to start talking about them and praying that they're all well and that God is keeping them and God is blessing them and I get a text from brother Leo yesterday and 
he tells me him and Golda is coming to church. I said, we were just talking about y'all. <laughs> now, you know what? That couldn't happen in the natural me. But see, when you walk in the spirit, oh man, God's amazing. That's all I can tell you. Because he hooks and links your heart to people. And then what happens? God will bring them even as you speak them. And he sends the word out in the spirit. Now, I don't know what caused Brother Leo to text me yesterday, but I know God sent word to his heart. It was a blessing to just hear from I even told him on the time, I said, we were just talking about you guys. But see, that's how God works. And he's been doing that to me all my life. Soon as I mention somebody, he brings them up. It's like, but it, it's that spiritual connection with God, being connected with him. He'll show you things even before it happened. He'll give you discernment so that you'll know what's coming. And I come to let you know the world is falling. It's falling fast. Wars are coming. Famines are coming. Prices going up is a sign. Something's happening. You can't make up for what you lost in the pandemic. Over seven dollars more, over seven cents more for gas. Can't make it up. But prices are going up because things are getting bad. But I've never seen the righteous. Saints, we got to trust God yes. more than ever before. The pandemic was a warning to us to pray more, but it was a warning to the world that God's wrath is coming. Come on and lift your hands with me. Come on and lift your hands with me. Lift your hands unto the Lord. We got to change what we see. We got to see what God's word says. Just begin to bless him right there where you are. Begin to bless him right there where you are. If you are a worshiper, I need you to worship him. There should not be one person in here without their hands up. Everyone should be lifted up in surrender right now. Your hands in surrender to God. For we need him more now than ever before. We may not know what's coming, but we know whose we are and who we are. And we know that God will keep us and protect us. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. God is going to change things. He's going to turn things around. It may look one way, but God is changing it. All things work together for the good. It's going to work out for your good. Don't, even if it looks bad, it's working out for your good. Even if it looks terrible, God is turning it around in your favor, in the church favor. That's why the church is going to see blessings while the world sees chaos. The church is going to see blessings while the world sees pandemonium come to pass. I know that they're working on a race war. I know it. I know it. But I trust in the Lord. He is my keeper. He is my deliverer. I'm not worried about it. For I know who I belong to. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We give you praise for all that you're doing. Father, we thank you, God, that you have given us your word to help us to have a different perception of what's happening in the world. Lord, we bless you that your word brings us to what you see rather than what the world sees. Father, the world sees chaos about to break out. The world sees that they don't understand what's happening. But Lord, we totally understand it because there's a real devil in the world. But Lord, we know that there's a real God and he's been real. And our God created the devil. And Lord, we know that you have power over him. You have power over all evil. You have power over the world for you allow governments to be. You raise up leaders and cause leaders to fall. You cause nations to come up and nations to go down. Father, you are in control. You are in control. And Lord, we bless you. 
for we know that you will see us through. You will protect us from our enemies and you will keep us for our steps are ordered by you. And we bless you even now. We are blessed. We are blessed. We do have the favor of God. Grace is with us. Mercy is upon us. And God's mercy endureth forever. And we bless you, God. We thank you for our unsaved, that they will be saved. We thank you for our sick, that they will be healed. We thank you for the dead that will be raised. For you are going to move this day from this day forward as never before. We will see great things in this earth. And we bless you for it. We trust in you. We believe you according to your word. According to your word, let it be done. Be it done unto us in the name of Jesus. Now clap your hands like you know God's going to do it. Clap your hands like you know he's in control. Clap your hands because you know God won't fail. Bless him. Bless him, all ye people. Praise him. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I'm saved. I'm saved. Saved. I'm saved. By his power divine. Saved. Through this newness sublime. Life is complete and my joy. Because I'm. Bless the Lord. God bless you, saints. We love you.